tease of water. So I have a dog down here. So water is polar. Now water being polar makes it a very good solvent. Lots and lots of things will dissolve in water. Anything that is an ion, anything that is also polar. So for plants that might be nitrates in the water dissolving into the water and then that being taken in through the root hair cells and up through the plant. Um, aquatic, um, so fish for example, require um, oxygen that's dissolved in the water. The plants in um, oceans require carbon dioxide that can be dissolved in the water. Um, and for us, things like uh, hormones, enzymes travel in the blood, glucose travels in the blood. So they all need to be dissolved in order to travel in the blood. So that also makes it a very good transport medium um, because it is such a good solvent. Um, so it being polar, um, it being solvent, there is also something called cohesion and adhesion. Now cohesion is water to water. Adhesion is water sticking to anything else and it's something else that is polar or something that is actually an ion. My dog is just lying right in the way. Um, so if you stand in a puddle and the water wicks up your trousers, that's because your trousers have a charge and the water is drawn, attracted to that charge and will move um, up your trousers. So it's exactly what happens in xylem vessels where water sticks to water so it'll move as one column. It also sticks to the xylem vessel walls so it will move up the xylem vessels to be taken up the plant. Now these two properties also lead to something else, surface tension. Now that means you can have um, something like a pond skater, it can spread, distribute its weight on the, on the surface of the water and it can live on the water. So organisms can live in water, they can also live on water. So let's have a look at the high specific heat capacity. So the specific heat capacity is how much water, uh, how much energy something um, can absorb before it changes temperature. Now, water has to absorb a lot of energy before it changes temperature. So that makes it stable. Now that's great as an environment because it means the temperature of the water doesn't change very much. So for us, the temperature inside our cells, in our tissues, doesn't change very much. That gives great stability for enzymes to work. In aquatic animals, they um, so mammals maintain their own body temperature. Things like fish don't maintain their own body temperature. So if the temperature of the water fluctuated, their body temperature would also fluctuate. So that makes it a very, very stable environment. And that's particularly for enzymes. Now, the um, other thing that water has a high of is latent heat of vaporization. Because it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of energy before it will become a gas. Now that's great because it will then act as a coolant. So when we sweat, the evaporation of that sweat is what cools us. Because the evaporation of the sweat is from the heat energy in your skin. And it takes that excess heat with it. Um, so that makes it a very, very good coolant. And then density. Water is relatively viscous. It's not great viscous. It's not like treacle. Treacle or honey is very viscous. Um, so it allows organisms to swim, um, but it gives them some buoyancy because the density is buoyancy, is such that it will support those organisms. It doesn't require too much energy to flow through the water, um, but it's, it's got enough resistance that they can actually swim, change direction, um, that kind of thing. So there are lots and lots and lots of different things you can talk about with water. The other thing with water is that as it decreases in temperature, it becomes more dense. But then as it goes, uh, goes below four degrees, it actually becomes less dense. And that is quite unusual. So ice will float. Now that does a couple of things. It's another habitat that um, organisms can live on. Um, but it also insulates the water underneath. Now, when you insulate the water underneath, the whole body of water, so the rest of it, so it doesn't freeze. 
Now, whenever you get questions about water, you can talk about all of these different things, but you must relate it to the question. So sometimes they talk about how um, the properties of water lead it to, to be a good solvent, or how it's a good habitat, or how it aids survival. You've always got to relate it. So aiding survival, for example, if you just said it had a high specific heat capacity, which means it's stable, so what? How does that actually help with the survival of the animals? It's because the enzymes can still work. What about it acting as a solvent? Great, but that's because it can take dissolved nutrients for, I don't know, so if we looked at nitrates, nitrates are needed for making amino acids and proteins. So you have to relate it to something. Okay? Right, I think that was everything I was going to talk about.